What is up, ladies and gentlemen, man here. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the Clitter Halle First and Failed. And this is going to be the last part of this little mini series technique training for beginners. Kind of a little bonus to the previous ones about the barn door, backstepping and flagging, and so on and so forth, which I will all comprise in my rock climbing technique playlist, which you can check out here in case you are interested. Some good stuff in there. So, yeah, really recommend it. Um, and this one is going to deal with special terrains. I say kind of a bonus because these terrains are rather rare and rarely encountered, especially by the modern standard gym plastic climber out there. And there aren't really any groundbreaking techniques which make them all super easy all of a sudden. It's rather just uh, basic physics which are at work here. However, maybe I can drop the one or the other tip to enrich your technique toolbox a little bit. So special terrains. Now, what do I mean with that? Basically, climbing problems which take place in rather weird rock formations like dihedral cathedrals. Yeah, I mean, yeah, dihedrals, arets. I don't know how to pronounce it, honestly. Arets and uh, chimneys. As usual, we are going to see Torsten climbing a few technique-specific routes on these terrains, and I will try to analyze the juice out of it. Yeah, same procedure as every episode, James. Right now we can see Torsten climbing this dihedral route here and when it comes to dihedrals there's really three great tools which you have to keep in mind and these are number one leg flexibility, secondly leaning and pushing onto these side walls contrary to the usual pulling motion that dominates most climbs. I'm not saying that all dihedrals are all about pushing exclusively, but I think you get the point. Pushing in general is significantly useful in any situation where there are two surfaces facing each other to some degree, and therefore it will reoccur throughout this episode. You can guess um, on which other special terrain this happens a lot as well. And number three is uh, science friction. Now, I'm just talking about friction and smearing. Um, of course, in regards to smearing when it comes to stepping and using the palm of your hands for pushing without necessarily stepping or gripping certain structures that could be termed holds. Here we can see the comparison of the uh, first shot that I showed you and the second shot both times Torsten climbing this arid and I think you can see all three of these points uh, rather you know significantly here that I discussed before. In the second shot Torsten actually tries to climb the route without even grabbing uh, a hold of the route itself you know just by stepping and as you can see how effective here this pushing method is for you know pushing yourself up this wall just by using the friction of the palm of your hands. So this is definitely something to keep in mind when it comes to dihedrals. Next on the list we have the aret. Um, sorry, again, I have no idea how to pronounce that or the, the ret. A funny day today, bear with me please, thanks. Two things are important here if you ask me and these are compression, number one, and hooks, number two, especially heel hooks. It is questionable how much sense it actually makes to even separate the two given that most compression problems are dominated by heel hooks anyway. But anyway, uh, obviously having some compression power can really help utilizing yet again friction on surfaces that form an arete. Although we're looking at a super beginner route here containing lots of good holes where um, that is not really necessary. I mean, here's another shot of Torsten climbing this route and uh, here Torsten demonstrates the usefulness um, of heel hooks in these kind of situations. Remember that we are a lot stronger to pull on our heels compared to our toes. Um, since the strength of your hind thighs is applied here much more directly, so to say, so yeah, keep the heel hook in mind uh, when it comes to your technique toolbox when it, yeah on when climbing compression style situations in general. Uh, if you want to learn about more about hooks in more detail, um, you can check out my technique episode about them. It's a good episode, so yeah, it might be worth a look. Here we have the two one more time compared to each other. As you can see, I mean, there's not really a lot of a difference here in the style how he performs this route. Um, although he uses almost exclusively hooks in the right shot and almost exclusively the toes in the left shot. Um, yeah, again, on really easy routes, it doesn't really make a lot of a difference. But on, you know, overhanging arets, for example, or, or you know, these overhanging arets style boulder problems, they, they exist quite often, you know, um, because, yeah, rock formations are kind of often formed like that. Here, the heel hook can be really useful. 
All right, let's move on to the chimney. That's a rare one. We only encountered once in a while by the one or the other multi-pitcher out there, maybe, or alpine style adventurers. Um, but hey, it's a special terrain and we've got you covered, baby. This is this technique specific route here. So essentially what's true for the cathedral dihedral, it is also true for the chimney. Um, only more, what's the word, pronounced, I would say. Um, again, we have essentially at work here leg flexibility, lots of pushing as you can see, and of course friction and smearing. Now depending on how far both sides are apart, more or less flexibility is involved obviously. But contrary to the dihedral, since both walls are really on completely opposite sides, the friction component can be exploited to such an extent that we do not necessarily have to use any climbing holes at all. Um, here you can see uh, in, in this next shot Torsten climbing the route already with only stepping the footholds. I mean only stepping, you know, holds with his feet. His hands are already only using friction. And as you can see, yeah, he needs quite an ability to step high here. But once he can do that, he can really, um, you know, basically go up this thing like in a, in a staircase, so to say. And of course, finally, yet again, we have a shot where Torsten climbs the chimney without using any, you know, of the screwed in holes at all. And this is very well possible as well, as you can see. You have to, you know, uh, modify your leg positioning a little bit. And you really have to use a lot of pushing power. As you can see, this is kind of exhausting for him. It's not so easy as the other ones. But um, it works despite that quite well. It's a little bit slower, obviously, than the other uh, modes. But yeah, again, you gotta be creative here a little bit, you know. You can really use these um, antagonistic pushing powers that you hopefully have gained through your antagonistic training. That's basically it for this video, my friends. I just wanted to cover some special terrains that I haven't really talked about so far on the channel. Again, being creative with leg flexibility, friction and pushing will get you up those dihedrals and chimneys. And watch out for heel hooks and compression options on arets. Uh, they can go a long way, you really. As always, smash like if you enjoyed and leave your experiences down below. I would be happy to read them. Did I forget something? Let me know. And yeah, until then, I hope you're doing fine. I hope you're having a good training. Uh, it's getting warmer outside already. It's time to have some outdoor adventures again. And until then, I'll see you soon. Bye.